Skywatch Media News for August the 28th, 2021. The sun is becoming very active, more than was previously predicted. And you will no doubt be hearing more and more about space weather this week and in the coming months. The National Weather Service Space Weather Prediction Center announced that a Class C3 solar flare erupted from the sunspot region 2859 on August 26th sending a solar shock wave towards Earth. Initial analysis and modeling indicate that the solar explosion has set off a solar tsunami, often referred to as a Morton wave, which is a large-scale solar corona shock wave generated by solar disturbances. In essence, it is a wave of hot plasma and magnetism, which can reach a height of 62,000 miles, racing through the solar system at speeds of 560,000 miles per hour. The solar tsunami wave is a proven phenomenon dating back to the year 2009, when NASA's Solar Observatory first observed its presence. In February of that year, the Stereo spacecraft captured the unexpected eruption of Sunspot 11,012. The blast hurled a billion-ton cloud of gas into space, sending the tsunami scurrying along the sun's surface. The wave was recorded from two positions separated by 90 degrees. It was a definite wave of plasma and magnetism that reached a height of 60,000 miles, spreading outwards at 560,000 miles per hour packing as much energy as 2.4 million megatons of TNT. The solar spacecraft also spotted the wave crashing into coronal holes, referred to as a dancing prominence. The CME that was released from Region 2859 on August the 26th has initiated a solar tsunami similar to the one observed in the year 2009. The ultraviolet image captured from the Solar Dynamics Observatory shows the solar tsunami depicted as a shadowy wave rippling across the sun. Based on observational analysis, the tsunami was traveling at speeds exceeding 110,000 miles per hour. Solar events such as these can create immense havoc on our planet. We are always reminded of the powerful geomagnetic storm that happened in September of the year 1859 during solar cycle number 10. A CME hit the Earth, causing the largest solar storm on record. The storm was so intense that it created bright, vivid auroras across the planet. Residents of California thought the sun was rising earlier than usual, and residents of the Northeast could read newspapers outdoors in the middle of the night. Residents of Hawaii and Mexico were also treated to the aurora in the sky. The event severely damaged the electrical and communication lines that existed at the time, including the failure of telegraph systems. If a similar solar event were to occur today, the economic effects would be unprecedented. When Sunspot 2859 exploded on August the 26th, the shortwave radios on the day side of the Earth erupted with static. The sounds recorded from an observatory in rural New Mexico are indicative of a solar radio burst. The static recording was actually caused by the plasma shock wave in the ionized corona that rippled through the sun's atmosphere. Scientists are working diligently to determine the magnitude of the geostorm that is expected to impact the Earth before the end of this month. 
Another active region of the sun produced an M 4.7 solar flare today, August 28th. The flare closely follows the increased solar activity of the past couple of days. Today's flare is associated with a Type 2 radio emission, which are typically associated with a coronal mass ejection. A Type 4 radio emission was also registered, which is indicative of a major eruption on the Sun. Type 4 emissions are associated with strong CMEs and solar radiation storms. Region 2860 has Beta Gamma magnetic configuration and is capable of producing strong eruptions. Its current location would favor Earth-directed CMEs. New discoveries continue to be made in our solar system, as was evident this past week when an asteroid named 2021 PH27 was discovered. This asteroid is remarkable in that it orbits the Sun in just 113 days, the shortest orbital period of any known asteroid. It also has the second shortest orbital period for any object in the solar system, with the exception of the planet Mercury, which has an 88-day orbital period. The asteroid is rare in that it is a member of the Atira asteroids, which orbits entirely interior to Earth, with a perihelion of 12.7 million miles and an aphelion of nearly 73 million miles. At its closest approach to our planet, it passes at a good 20 million miles. Now here are a few points of interest. The asteroid has the smallest orbit of any known asteroid, with a semi-major axis of only 0.46 astronomical units. Now most asteroids' orbits are well beyond this distance. The asteroid has an absolute magnitude of plus 17.7, .7, which infers that its size is about 3,300 feet in diameter. The surface of 2021 pH 27 at perihelion is 900 degrees Fahrenheit. It has an orbital inclination of 31.7 degrees relative to the ecliptic, which suggests that it passes close to Venus on occasion. The discovery of this asteroid is incredible. It provides some reassurance to astronomers that they will one day find the elusive class of intermercurial asteroids, known as volcanoids, which takes its name from Vulcan, a theoretical world that is interior to the orbit of Mercury. The effort to discover the first true volcanoid will be difficult since looking for objects interior to Mercury has only been accomplished through observations high in the Earth's atmosphere from spacecrafts or during solar eclipse events. But 2021 PH27 is intriguing and may indicate that more will come our way. On the 24th of August, the residents of South Africa thought that they were observing a spectacular meteor shower. But what they were actually witnessing was a bolid, a very bright meteor that often explodes on entry into the Earth's atmosphere and can be seen far and wide. A bolid can be between 1 and 10 meters in diameter, and it can be fiery hot at over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Bolids, such as the one over South Africa, can cause shock waves, such as the meteor that exploded over Russia in 2013, producing an incredibly strong airburst. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and always keep looking to the sky.